Hello, this is Jack Jackson, and in this series of videos coming up, we're going to be working on several different homework type problems for uh, calculus, particularly working on problems that review the, the stuff that's been in this video uh, playlist on concepts of derivatives. So if you've been following along with me and working through all the videos in this playlist up to this point, you should have developed the skills to be able to do uh, and work out all these problems. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to present to you a problem and then I'm going to pause, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and work the problem yourself and then you can check your work by uh, then pressing play and then I'll go over the problems. So you're going to get a lot more out of this if you will actually uh, work these problems yourself. Now these problems were all problems that I've chosen from recent exams and practice tests and, and such uh, from my classes that I've taught in recent semesters. Okay, from Calculus 1. Uh, many of these same problems are used and in fact almost all of these would be appropriate for something like a survey of calculus as well. Okay, so here we go. The first thing that I want you to do is to complete this table. Okay, so notice that I'm asking about the difference quotient in this column, symmetric difference quotient here, and derivative in the last column. The first row is asking for the definition. The definition is an algebraic formula kind of thing, so be sure you put that in there. Then the next uh, row is the geometric representation, actually just a verbal description of that. So you don't necessarily have to draw any pictures here, but you have to explain what will be happening on the graph there. So it's sort of a graphical representation. And the last one is if you try to put this in the context of a real world problem, what is the physical or contextual interpretation of these? So these last six things are going to be the context of these geometrically and in, in a real world context and the first line are the actual definitions. So go ahead and do this yourself now. You should have all of, should be able to do everything on this from memory. Press pause. Okay, so like I said, you should be able to do this from memory. Let's take a look at the solutions here. You know, in any, in any uh, course, definitions are very, very important. So if you're studying anything, you definitely need to learn the definitions. And in mathematics, definitions are very precisely stated. So you have to learn how to really state these pretty much exactly the way that I'm presenting them. Okay, so the first thing here, we have the difference quotient. Now the difference quotient really is just a slope formula. So the bottom is delta x, which I'm calling h. And I'm thinking of this at a point a comma f of a. And so the difference quotient then, then is f of a plus h minus f of a over h, which is just a number for a specific value of a and a specific value of h. Now we can do the symmetric difference quotient. The symmetric difference quotient is also similar. It's also a delta y over delta x, just like the difference quotient was. This time, 2h is delta x, so the denominator is 2h. And then the numerator is our delta y or delta f, which is f of a plus h minus f of a minus h. Okay. Now, um, the derivative takes the difference quotient. So notice you take exactly this thing that we have over here in the difference quotient, right here. And then just take a limit as h goes to 0. That is the limit of a difference quotient, which is the derivative. One way to write that is f prime at evaluated at a or df over dx such that x equals a. So those are the definitions. Definitely should memorize those. Those are extremely important. Next we'll talk about the, the description here. So there's definitely some key words I'm looking for here. One of the key words is slope. In fact that's the key word in all of these. So when we're talking about these difference quotient symmetric difference quotient and derivative, they're all slopes of some kind or another. In fact, if you're talking about at a specific number a for the input, then all of these are numbers, but they're numbers that have meaning. Okay, what is that geometric meaning? Well, the difference quotient is a slope between two points on the graph. So it's a slope. It does go from two points. In other words, it's a slope of a secant line. So that's the key thing that you want to remember there, slope of a secant line. 
The symmetric difference quotient is also the slope between two points on the graph, and it's also the slope of a secant line. So what's the difference between a difference quotient and a symmetric difference quotient? Well, in the difference quotient, one of the points that we're using is our point A comma F of A. So one of the points that we're doing the slope formula for is our fixed point of interest. The symmetric difference quotient, on the other hand, the two points are equally to the right and left of our point of interest. The, their a comma uh, a comma f of a is used as our point of interest. That's used over here in the difference quotient. In the symmetric difference quotient, they're a plus h comma f of a plus h, a minus h comma f of a minus h are the two points. So notice that they're equally spaced to the left and right, so that uh, h away from our our uh, x value of a, which makes our delta x 2h, and the delta y is what you see in the top. So it's a slope between two points on the graph. And so both of those are slopes of secant lines or slopes between two points on the graph. Now the derivative is also a slope, but it's at a single point of interest. So what does that mean? That means it's a slope of the tangent line to the graph there. So, so the symmetric difference quotient and the difference quotient are both slopes of secant lines. The derivative then is a slope of a tangent line. It's not the tangent line, it's the slope of that tangent line, which is a number. The physical contextual thing that we're looking for, rate of change is the key thing that you're going to see all the way across here. So in the physical context, the difference quotient is the average rate of change in the function over the interval. And one end of the interval is our point of interest. Okay. Now, the uh, you also get an average rate of change for the symmetric difference quotient, okay, and um, the difference, of course, here is just which point you use. This interval over here on the difference quotient, one interval is our point of interest, where, where you know a, x equals a is one endpoint. Over here, our x is our x's of our endpoints of our interval are both to the, equally to the left and right of our point of interest. They go from a uh, minus h to a plus h for the x phase. So these are average rates of change here for both the difference quotient and the symmetric difference quotient. The derivative is also a rate of change, but it's not an average rate of change. It's an instantaneous rate of change, a rate of change that happens right at a single instant. Now here I'm thinking all these as uh, being evaluated at a point. We can also take the derivative uh, formula here and think of it a, like replace a by x here and here and here and think of x now as a variable and then we get a instead of getting just a single number out of here we get a formula that has x in it and that formula is the formula for the uh, the derivative function so we can also look at it that way all right next we're going to look at a series of problems where we do some approximation of derivatives so first of all, is a function even differentiable or not? Well, this derivative may or may not exist because the limit may or may not exist. For one thing, the f of a must exist. But if we assume that this derivative exists uh, in this table, so we assume that we have a function here that it has a derivative everywhere, or at least between 2 and 11, okay? If it has a derivative, what is the, the uh, derivative at 5? What is f prime of 5? Well, we don't have enough information really to figure this out from the table, but we can approximate it. So you should know how to do this at this point in the course. So um, do this yourself. Come back and check your work. Press pause now. Well, the solution is to use a symmetric difference quotient. In other words, just use the slope formula. Now, if you used a difference quotient, you could get a decent answer. Say, just use... Uh, the 5 and the, that point and this point would give you a difference quotient with an h of uh, 6. A better version would be to use a difference quotient using those two points and doing the slope. That would be a difference quotient with an h of 3. We could also use over here, use these two points and do a slope. That would be a difference quotient using an h of negative 3. But the best way to do it is either is to take this one and this one and average the two which is found more easily by just doing a symmetric difference quotient. That is taking this point at 2 comma 16.23 and 8 comma 9.24 and just do the good old slope formula. 
So it's delta y, that's 9.24 minus 16.23, that's the numerator. And then divide by delta x, which is 8 minus 2. Of course, 8 minus 2 is 6. 9.24 minus 16.23 is negative 6.99. So going from this point here to this point here, we went to the right 6. So we have a positive uh, 6 for delta x in the denominator. And we went down on the y's. Uh, we did, went down uh, negative 6.99. Divide that out and you get negative 1.165 and that's our best estimate of the derivative right at 5. Okay, let's do another one very similar to that. So just for more practice here. What's the best estimate of f prime at 4 from this table? Again, assuming that the derivative exists there. Press pause now. Okay, let's take a look at this. Hopefully you've worked this out on your own. It works just like the last one, right? So you find your point of interest. You go to the left and to the right. You take those two points and just do the slope formula. So delta y is 3.98 minus 1.82 or two positive 2.16. Delta x is 6 minus 2, which is 4. So we're going to the right 4 and up 2.16. That works out to be 0.54. So 0.54 is our best estimate. Now, how about another question? Well, how, how could you estimate f double prime for, for uh, at this point, x equals 4? Okay, so think about that. You should have seen examples of this before and know how to do this one. Uh, work this out yourself. Press pause now. Well, to, the f double prime is the derivative of the derivative. So what we really need to do is to um, have some values of a derivative. We can get some derivative points nearby by taking these two points and doing a slope. That would give us the derivative somewhere between 2 and 4, let's say at 3. That would be a symmetric difference quotient for x equals 3. And if we take the slope of the, between those two points, that would give us a symmetric difference quotient for x equals 5. So let's do that now. Okay, so uh, here we go. That's going to give us, uh, let's see, what do we do first? I did the one here at 3 first. So f prime at 3 is approximately 2.15 minus 1.82 over 4 minus 2. That works out to be 0.165. And then if we use these two and do the slope, that gives us the derivative at 5, or at least approximately that. So 3.98 minus 2.15 over 6 minus 4 is approximately 0.915. So now we have a little table here of x and f prime of x. f and f, x and f prime of x. So I can use those two points, the point 3 comma 1.65 and the point 5 comma 0.915, do the slope between those two points, and that is going to be the uh, the 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 slope of the derivative function there, or in other words, the second derivative of the original function. So that's 0 0.915 minus 0 0.165 over 5, uh, 5 minus 3, okay, which are, works out to be 0 0.375, which is approximately the derivative halfway between 3 and 5, which is, uh, we're at 4, the second derivative there, and that's what we were looking for. So the answer is 0 0.375. All right, what if we were, so we've seen how to take a table and approximate a first derivative or even a second derivative as well. What if we're given a formula, can we approximate the derivative, say, to four places? f of x equals 16 times ln of x to the power of 2x minus 1. Approximate f prime at 3 accurate to four decimal places. Okay, you should be able to do this one. Work it out yourself. Come back when you got it. Press pause now. Okay, well, again, what we want to do is we want to do a symmetric difference quotient. So what we want to do is take this basic formula here for the symmetric difference quotient. Our A is uh, whatever I gave you. Let's see here, 3. Okay, and this, is, this value here is that formula with 3 minus h plugged in, the formula for x. And this is the value with 3 plus h plugged in. Of course, this is... 2 times h. 
Well, what do we use for H? Well, pick something small. Since we have a calculator to do this, we could, for example, plug in H equals 0 .001 and work this out. Well, it turns out that this is actually built in our calculator, so this is actually quite easy to do on the TI graphing calculator. So, for example, on a TI-84, what we want to do is uh, is is uh, use a symmetric difference quotient. It's the numerical derivative. So, if you got the older operating system or the new operating system, either one, you, you press math nine, math eight. Excuse me. Okay. So math 8 is where you start. And it's either going to come up with this thing here and set N D E R I V open parentheses, or it's going to come up, up this with D over D blank blank such that X equals or blank equals blank. Okay? So when you plug in this X right here, that's the variable X. That's the second thing that you plug in here is your variable X. When you do that, that's going to make this an X, and the three here is where we're evaluating it, then that goes, that's the last number you put in here. The thing you put first in the parentheses is the formula. Now when you're doing this, be sure you watch your, your parentheses here. So this parentheses at the beginning, at the end, is, the func is for the der numerical derivative. Inside here, we've got the open parentheses for the log. There's the close there, and we have a parentheses around the whole power as well. Okay, and that's what you put in the parentheses here is the function. Now this no notation in the newer operating system is actually a lot better because it is basically the way we would write this by hand using Leibniz notation. Okay, and this defaults to an H value of 0 .001 and you can see what we got there. This is the same number we get here in the old system so it gives you the same thing whether you're using the new or the old system. In the older system, we can also change the value of h a little bit, and here I put in a, a little bit smaller h, and when I did uh, there, uh, to four decimal places, it's still 61.8223, and up here it was 61.8223 when you round up to four decimal places. So since those were the same, we're, we're, we're very confident that we have um, this accurate to four decimal places, 61.8223. If you have a TI Inspire, it looks just like the new operating system here. It's not Math 8 to get there. Uh, you get it from one of the, uh, the menus, but it, it works the same way. Okay, so why don't we try another one like that. Uh, here, f of x is x to the power of 5x minus 12, and see if you can use the calculator to approximate f prime at 2. And of course, the other question is, what is the calculator doing? It's doing a symmetric difference quotient. But it's all built in, so you could just use a numerical derivative to do this. So you go ahead and do it. Press pause now. Well, it works basically the same as the last problem. I'm, I don't have the calculator screenshots here, uh, but we have, have this. In fact, why, why, why not? Let me... Uh, this may take me a second to get this to come up. Yeah, here we go. So let's actually put the calculator screenshots and you can see me actually do it here on the calculator. So it's math 8. This is the older operating system, the way it looks. And so you put in the function, x to the power, the formula for the function, parentheses, 5x minus 12 close parentheses, there, then you put comma, there's the comma, and then the variable's x, just always use x for that second part, comma, and then the value a, that you, or a value of x that you want to evaluate at, 2, and you can close it there, and this is what you get here. If we do second entry and we do the same thing, notice if I put uh, point zero zero one in here, I get the same that same thing, but if I go here and put in a smaller h, uh, you notice that I think um, these agree to several places here. The first time you see something different, one, two, three, four, 
about the sixth place over, you see something different. So certainly to four or five places, these are, well, I guess the fifth place, this rounds off to four and this one to three. But to three places, four places, they're definitely the same. Now, if you have a an Inspire, let's see. Let me show you. Here's the here's the cast version of the Inspire, um, but the the non-cast version works basically the same. Let's see. So I'll tell you what, let's just uh, we'll get it to where you can see the handheld device here. Okay. All right, so I think you can see it there. So uh, get to a calculator screen, calculation screen, and then the way you do this is you press this little button right here. See the times button? Then go up one button from that, and there's it's got some symbols on there. Press the left side of that button there, and you can see derivative is this little symbol right here. So use your arrow keys to highlight that, and hit enter. Uh, I'm sorry, you hit enter. There it is. And this is the the way this comes up. So we put our variable down here x, and then we put our formula here, which was x to the power, let's go ahead and put the parentheses, 5x minus 12. And we wanted this a point, so we have to so we have to do such that, which is a vertical line. Can you see the vertical line right there in blue right above the equals? So hit control equals, and then we can choose such that x equals and what was x here? Uh, was it 2? Two? 2. Now if I hit enter on the um, cast version, it's going to give me an exact value, which we can see is 5 times the natural log of 2 minus 1 over 4. But if you want an approximation, if you just did what I just did on the non-cast version, it's going to give you a decimal approximation. Uh, but I can hit control equals, and it does that in a decimal version, and if you look, that is the same, the same as the uh, as the other. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, capture that screen and paste it over here. Okay, so you can see the uh, what's on the the two screens there. So the right is the Inspire and the left is the older version of the TI-84. Okay, the next video we'll come back and maybe approximate from a graph and do some other things with this. So we have a series of these videos here. See you on the next one.